everybody. I'm Madeline Sklar, host of the Social ROI Chat, the most awesome chat of the week. And I am here to celebrate our one year anniversary. We've got an amazing group of people that are gonna be with us for the hour and we're gonna rotate and have lots of fun so you can hear a bunch of different people chat. And we're starting off with the actual team, the Managed Flitter team that puts this chat together every single week. I got Kate Frapple and Joe Pinto. Hey ladies, how are you doing? Hello. <laughs> good things. How are you going? This is so much fun. I mean, gosh, we, we made it a whole year, a whole year of doing this chat every single week. And you both have been such an amazing part of this journey every week, working up the titles and the question or topics and the questions. And uh, Kate, I know you do a lot of research with each guest and come up with so much information to help make this such a great chat. So why don't you both each, we'll start with you, Kate, have you each introduced yourself and just a little bit about your thoughts on this? Oh, cool. Um, so, I don't really know what to start with. We um, we started the chat a year ago, as you mentioned. Um, started with Evan Dunn, who's sort of done some freelance type work for Managed Flutter for a really long time. Um, and, yeah, now we've come to chat number 54, I believe, which has been really good. I've really enjoyed it. I started off not knowing quite what the benefit was or even what a Twitter chat even was. Um, but I got to about um, probably about the sixth one and I was like, oh, this is this is great. Like the same faces keep popping up and like sort of building that relationship with people and and really getting insight into, you know, just social in general, learning things and, and also just our target market, like um, understanding what people need, what they want, how they're using social. Like it's, it's really valuable, um, especially from my side designing sort of the new interface for managed social and yeah, just getting an idea of what people need. Awesome. Joe, a little bit about yourself. Um, so uh, about myself, I basically am the business operations manager here at Manage Flitter. Um, what that means is I pretty much dip my fingers into all parts of the business, whether it's customer support, project management, um, you name it, admin, um, sort of just help out in little bits and pieces. Um, when the Twitter chat first started, um, I was pretty much in the same boat with Kate. I mean, I had taken a role previously as a, a web a project manager for building websites and then now I came on as the um, business operations manager for Manage Flitter, which is all, you know, it's all about social and all of that. So... Um, the Twitter chat was, yeah, I think it started out as a bit of a, a challenge, but a fun challenge at that. And I think from there um, you can see the the great benefits that you get from having a Twitter chat. It's like you get this full 360 view of everything, um, whether it's yourself learning about social media, um, all the way from like customer service to Instagram to VR to influencers, content marketing, you name it. We've, co we've covered it this year. And then also the community behind it. Um, like Kate said, seeing those the same faces all the time. It's, um, it's a really positive experience. You get to learn from it. Um, and it also just gets you into that world of social media and, and all of those things that come with it. Exactly. Have either of you had experience being on Twitter chats in the past or was this like your first time really being in a chat? It was it, definitely my first time. I didn't even know yeah. what one was. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Joe? <laughs> yeah. Really? First time. Yeah. I mean, I've been on Twitter for a while and um, it, no, it really, yeah, this was really the first time that I'd really sort of heard about Twitter chats and, and actually looked at it more closely. 
Interesting. Okay, cool. Well, you end up uh, being part of a really awesome chat for for first time out. So that's super cool. Are there any topics or guests that really resonated with you the most? Uh, Kate, we'll start with you. Are there any that like really stood out to you? Um, probably the one that comes to mind first was uh, the one we did with uh, Kerry Oshi Gogon. I think that's yeah. her name. Yeah. The, and doing like the law side of things um, and the disclosures. And like, I learned a lot from that. I think it was sort of a bit of a gray area. Um, and it's one of those things that you're sort of always conscious about. Like, you know, you don't want to infringe on copyright or stuff like that, but you're just really not sure how to go about it. Um, and so that one was really good for me, like just clearing up and, but also like the when and the why and, and the how. So like creative ways of, of adding in those disclosures and, um, you know, bad examples, good examples. Um, so that one, that one stood out for me. Um, another one would be, I like the niche ones actually. Um, the LinkedIn one is Ravika was also a good uh-huh. one for me. Um, just cause I'm not that up to speed on LinkedIn. Um, so that was a good learning experience as well. Um, Kathy Hackle VR, that was a good yes. one. Um, and I also recently enjoyed uh, Christoph's one on storytelling. That was really interesting as well and like putting a spin to personal ex- experiences as well as um, having a bit of a marketing message there as well. Yeah, those niche ones are really good. And I think valuable to so many people and you don't really – hear about some of these topics in other Twitter chats or even just out there on the internet, you know, whether it's on blogs and and other live streams. Uh, Joe, are there any that really stood out to you the most in the past year? Um, I just want to say that Kate and I did not compare any notes at all. And she's taken my favorite one as well. (laughs) (laughs) Same (laughs) one. (laughs) <laughs> Carrie's one was really interesting um, for me to to join in. It was, again, it is a great area. Um, social media is, in, in, it's still quite new. I mean, even though we've been in it for, you know, a couple of years or, or a few years, however long it's been, um, it has been a while, but it's still quite new. Um, you know, I still come across people who don't understand it, but, Having Kerry on there, um, well, first off, when we first um, brought Kerry on and I was looking at the, the topics that we were looking at um, for Kerry, I was like, law, you know, I'm not, I, to be honest, I don't really like law. It, whenever, <laughs> when I went to uni and I was looking at the topics, I'd be like, oh, definitely not going to be a lawyer, definitely not going to be an accountant. <laughs> I don't want to do any of that. It doesn't interest me. But having Kerry on was, um, was eye-opening. I really didn't know, um, you know, how much disclosure you, you you need to be transparent. You need to you need to say in your tweets that you know you're you're sponsored or it's an ad or you're promoting something. It didn't really occur to me, and you know, I think a lot of people don't still know that um, out there, which is really interesting. But because we're in it, and you know, if you're an influencer, for instance, um, we I guess, have a different view on it. It's like, oh, we're an influencer, we've said it and and all that. But, yeah, transparency is so important. And um, I think that point really got to me. And I really love that that flow chart was posted. I'm all about having tools with, to, to use in order to, you know, be more efficient or better at what I do. So that was really one of my favourites. Um, awesome, yeah. The other one that... <laughs> the other one that I really liked was um, Rebecca Raddus. That was awesome. I, I love I love it when we bring up topics that I've heard about before. But, you know, content, it, her talk was about content and I think people still miss that content is so important. Um, you know, we get questions, how can I grow my following? How can I um, get out there? Look at your content. It's Look at the value in it. Do your research. I think that's um, even though that's not quite niche, it's um, and it's it's a topic that always comes up. I think it's so important to to bring that topic up with content. And one of the um, other ones that I really liked was Sue on Instagram. That was a really fun chat. Um, and again, it's getting back to basics. You know, putting 
you know, and, and this is this doesn't just go for Instagram. It also goes for all the other social media platforms. But, you know, having consistent content, having your, your bio match everything that you talk about is, is so important. Having the right images to explain what you're trying to express, all that is is key, basically. Well said. I love it. And and how wonderful that Rebecca Radice is coming up next in, in just a moment here. Ladies, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I would love for you guys to stay in the green room with me in case I uh, want to bring you back on to talk some more. We'll definitely uh, ha um, have you guys probably come on at the end for some final thoughts uh, along with Kevin, our CEO at Manage Flitter. Um, but thank you both for sharing. This has been so great hearing your side of things, your thoughts, because you are truly the ladies behind this chat. And I don't know if people realize that how much work you guys do to help put this on with me. So thank you both so much. No worries. Thank, thank you. you. You've been a great help as well. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So we're going to bring up, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. We have great guests. And I'm about to bring two incredible people up, but please take a moment and hit the share button right below my video, right below, right here. You're going to see the share button. If you could share this out, I would be so grateful to you. This helps other people see and hear what we're talking about, which is just great stuff. So I'm going to bring up, we got uh, Zala and Rebecca here, and we're going to add them here to the live stream to chat with us next. Hello, ladies. Hello, Zala and Rebecca. How are you both doing? Hey, Hi. everyone. Excellent. Good to see you both. What a, a, a great time here celebrating one whole year of the social ROI chat. It has just been an amazing journey and appreciate you both being a part of it. Rebecca, you were such a great guest when we had you on last year uh, talking about content. And uh, Zala, you're one of our team members. You're one of our greeters that come and greet people as they uh, attend the chat each week. And you're just one of our amazing regulars, always uh, quick to respond and ask questions and be an active participant in the conversation. I really appreciate that. Um, before we dive in too far, uh, Rebecca, well, let's start with you. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, you bet. Well, congratulations, by the way. Thanks for having me here. Always enjoy spending time with you, Madeline. And oh, Zayla, thanks. oh my gosh, I, I feel like we've interacted and we know each other just from being online. Exactly. <laughs> well, like you said, um, my name is Rebecca Radice. I am the founder of Radiant LA. It is a premier training and development company. We work with growth driven leaders, helping them get uh, really all of their dots connected with online marketing. I am also uh, the author of Social Media Mastery and the creator of the best selling course, The Smart Guide to Marketing Your Business with Social Media. Awesome. Congratulations on all these great things that you're doing. I've been uh, watching it all unfold online. Um, I want to ask you a question. So the question I want to ask our guests, instead of going back to what their topic was and, and kind of rehashing it, now that we're in the beginning of a new year, I thought I would just ask everybody, what is their best social media tip for marketers in 2018? Because it'll be fun to get everybody's own take on that. So what are your thoughts for the new year? Well, I can take that if you want me to run with it. Yeah, for you, Rebecca. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, it, you know, obviously that is a very loaded question. There is so much within that that we can sit here and unpack. Um, but as as I think about what is the most important thing, I, I really think it's getting very focused on what I call your one thing. And I'm certain you see this, Madeline, across social media, but we are so spread out these days. We're running here, we're running there, we're trying to keep up, we're trying to be everything to everybody. And to truly succeed in 2018, I believe we've got to get crystal clear on just a few things. So first of all, 
within that, it's, you know, what is that one thing you're trying to achieve with social media? And certainly with every social channel, it's going to be a little bit different, whether you're trying to create visibility or awareness or traffic or sales, you really have to get clear on what that one thing is that you're trying to achieve with social media. And then second, what is that one thing you want to be known for? Because like I said, I, I think we're seeing too often that shiny object syndrome where well, I'm good at this and I'm good at that and I can help people with this, but you really have to get very clear in your own mind because if you don't know how you help people or what they're going to hire you for, there's no way that they're going to know that either. So really understanding what you want to be known for in 2018 and then what is that one outcome that you're going to provide? So what is that one thing that you're going to do for people once they connect for you, connect with you across social media? How are you going to help them? How are you going to improve their business? How are you going to uh, radically change their lives in 2018? So, you know, just getting really, really clear on what that one thing is that you want to do, you want to be, you want to create with social media, going to totally transform your use of social media in 2018. Wow. I was going to say, did I lose you? Is Madeline still there? Is Salem still there? Yeah. Maybe but she's having some trouble. Yeah. Well, I'll, 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 uh, I'll throw it over to you because that was <laughs> kind of my thoughts on, you know, it is so crazy, yeah. isn't it? And we see it a lot. I know we spend a lot of time together on Twitter and you see it where people are just chasing, 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 trying to figure out what it is that they, yeah. I, as I joke, what we want to be when we grow up, because as entrepreneurs, it can be very difficult yes, to nail that exactly. down. Yeah, but spot on, Rebecca. I think that uh, you know uh, you've uh, really uh, you've really um, uh, said it so well because a lot of times uh, we think about okay, new trends, what's coming, what's going on, and everything. But really, uh, it's so important that the focus. I mean, the focus and to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, I I mean. Uh, I can tell it also for myself. I, I was there. Uh, I have gone uh, through the same path and uh, just uh, thank you so much. That's, that's, that's just a wonderful advice. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. It is. It's well, and it's very empowering, isn't it? When you sit in that place of being very comfortable with what it is that you do better than anybody else. And all of a sudden, you kind of shed that stress that I think we pile on top of ourselves feeling as if we've got to be everywhere. We've got to do everything to talk to everybody and make all of those crazy connections and uh, definitely yeah. social media feeds into that that crazy do more do more do more and i yeah. think in 2018 we're taking a step back and really coming full circle into that that place where don't do more just do more with what you have with where yeah. your audience is and where you can best serve people exactly uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm having a oh, audio a fail here. No problem. Hold on one moment. Hold on, yeah. hold on. No problem, Rebecca was uh, really <laughs> taking <laughs> we'll just We'll just chat much. amongst ourselves, right? And unfortunately, I can't see if we're getting any comments. I guess I could pop over to, uh, let me pop over real quick here. Yeah, I can see it. Uh, yeah, uh, everybody's commenting. Uh, I know the team... I have lost your audio now. I don't know if you can still hear me. You can hear me? Hmm. I cannot hear you. How strange. Can you all hear me okay? Some challenges with the audio live. fail. Ooh, we can hear you now. I don't know why I can't hear you guys. Can you hear me okay? 
Okay. I, Zala, I'm going to let you kind of run things for a minute. I'm trying to figure out my audio. I don't know what's going on, but you guys keep it rolling. Y'all are doing good. And we're going to swap over to our next group in just I'll a pop. moment here. Yeah, you guys I'll can hear me out. all right? All right. I, I don't, I am so sorry. Let me go ahead and add, cause it's time for us to make our change to the next group and then I'll figure out my audio while we're doing that. So thank you both so much, Rebecca and Zala. You both are amazing. So thank you very, very much. Uh, we're going to be bringing up here our next group. Thank you so much. Sometimes technology likes to fail us. We got Carrie and Jessica with us. So let me get them both up here to start. So give me one moment. Thank you all so much for being here. Such a great group of people. Hello, ladies. Um, Hello. Hey. Appreciate you both being here. I think my AirPods have failed is what it is. So oh, no. uh, as long as there's no echo at the moment, then I think I can just go through my speakers right now. Thank you both for being here. So lovely to see you both. Thank you. Thank you for having us and congratulations. And happy early birthday. Just celebrations all around. Uh, I know. <laughs> it's like I, know I get to have birthday celebration tomorrow, more live streams and Twitter chats tomorrow. Appreciate you both being here. Y'all were both amazing on the social ROI chat this year. I loved everything that you both were talking about. Um, let's first start with introductions and then have you share your your best social media tip for the year. So uh, Carrie, why don't we start with you real quick? Give us a little breakdown about who you are and what you do. Hi, uh, Carrie O'Shea Gorgon. I'm a lawyer. I don't practice now. I'm in training now with marketing profs. So I help them develop and sell training. And I host their weekly podcast where I get to talk to really smart marketers. And that's what I do. Um, I was just listening to what Rebecca was saying before you brought us over. And I was like, yeah, what she said is good. I think that's my answer too. <laughs> no, it's been a while. I cut my hair since I came on, so I don't know if you recognize me. You look the same. <laughs> Thanks. You're supposed to say you look amazing. You do look amazing. 2018 has been good to you so far. Thanks. I'm just kidding. No, thanks for having me back. Um, in terms of a social media tip, in addition to what Rebecca said, which I thought was very smart, um, I'm hearing from a lot of smart people that Twitter presents more opportunities now than people might have realized that actually it's having something of a renaissance and people would be smart to consider advertising there. And yep. these people like like Mark Schaefer is one of them. These are people that I listen to. So my tip would be listen to Mark Schaefer and get over there and try some Twitter advertising. To see how it goes. I love how Twitter is making this huge comeback. And it's like, okay, some of us has been, have been here all this time. We, we never like ditched <laughs> it. We've been singing praise about it. Um, but it wasn't but, cool uh, anymore for a while. <laughs> I always thought it was really? cool. I, I don't yeah, think it ever uh, lost its coolness. Like mom cool. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> that's my kind of cool. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's my kind of cool too. You know? <laughs> well, Jessica, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Well, thank you. And Carrie, I think your hair looks great, by the way. Thank I you. just thought I'd add that. Yeah. See, this is how you do it, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta learn how to be a better um, host. <laughs> um, I just thought, uh, so my background, I'm a relationship marketing strategist and evangelist and agency owner here in Lyme, Ohio, where we practice relationship marketing. We like to say we help people be found, be social and be useful while building strong relationships with their ideal audience. So yeah, that's what I do on a day to day. And I like working with smart people too. And that's where you get all these good tips, right? And knowing where to go. So that's awesome. My tip for 2018, I think, is there's so much talk about, you know, that no like trust and all that. But I think one thing that we forget and that is all about the mutual respect. So while you're good content and you're pushing it out, is that social media is all about relationships and that you need to really dedicate that time, even though you're producing this content and you're pushing it out, dedicate 10 to 20 minutes a day if you can to engage with other people. So it's not just about you pushing your great content out, but remembering to go and show mutual respect to those that are showing it to you. So whether that's through even collaborations with others and you know mutually creating content together or just engaging with their content and seeing what else is out there, what other smart people are talking about and sharing it that's relatable to your audience, 
or just acknowledging the people that are connecting with your content. I think some wise things that people can do right now and that I've seen them doing um, already and that's taking kind of making a comeback, if you will, is Facebook groups, but groups for business. So creating like private communities, whether that is on Facebook business pages um, for your, your current clients or a niche group that you want to connect with on a deeper level and or, you know, LinkedIn groups, you know, but you have to be a dedicated person that you have within this group, not just another place where you're sharing the same content. But I think the more deeper that you can go with your relationships and and that you can get specific and you know dedicating some time to be intentionally engaging with others you're going to notice that impact instead of going you know mass scale and trying to reach everyone i think it's just bringing it to a select smaller group of people that you can intentionally connect with on a deeper level to make a big impact well said i love all that that is so good <laughs> and now you have like a conference every year right a social I media do. conference? I do. Uh, we do Social Media Week Lima. It's in June. It's June 20th, 21st, which we have some awesome people coming to that. So you can check that out, sociallima.com. If I could put a little plug in there, kind of just did. So uh, <laughs> yeah, that's our conference that we do. I think it's awesome that you do that. I mean, you're like one of those ladies that just like does it all. I mean, you're just like out there kicking butt. I love it. Um, and we re really appreciate you coming on the Twitter chat last year. I mean, so much insights that, that you shared. And Carrie, earlier, I don't know if you heard, uh, if you were like, uh, watching earlier at the beginning when, uh, the managed flitter team was on and we were talking about you and, and talking about some of the niche topics or niche topics that we had and how with yours with law, it was so incredibly interesting. Um, and I, I noticed that like you do make the rounds. Like I see you speaking <laughs> everywhere, sharing your insights. Um, what are some tips that you can, what are some good juicy tips you can give us for 2018 when it comes to, you know, social media and the law? Please, for the love of God, stop taking other people's copyrighted content and <laughs> sharing it <laughs> like you have the right to share it. Did we lose our audio? No, I'm here. Oh, I can God. still hear you. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah, no, that yeah. still happens a lot. Like I just had people ask me, well, I podcast and I use popular music mm -hmm. like to open my podcast. Is that cool? And I'm like, no, <laughs> stop. Yeah, I know. There's so many places now to the, that you can get, you know, legal, yeah. legal music that yeah. you can use. Like yeah. there's no excuse for it. So, and it's not even very social when you think about it. Like you're taking people's stuff, you're going to irritate them. So it's bad for your network and stuff like that. And that's not yeah. so much like a 2018 thing. It's for everything. But uh <laughs> I think 2018 is going to be the year that like the FTC and other comparable agencies in other countries come down on people for not disclosing sponsored relationships. That's the other thing I'd say about 2018 as influencer marketing takes off. People need to be really, really scrupulous like brands and influencers alike about mentioning things like, Oh, and I've been compensated by this brand <laughs> to, uh, to talk about this. Um, let your readers and listeners make up their mind about, you know, how much it might have swayed your opinion, but say something because it's only getting they're, they're basically closing all the loopholes up and coming after people this year so i'd be really careful that's it i cannot <laughs> hear you i'm just letting you know i'm just what do you think what do you think i like i said something good so strange. Like, <laughs> What do you, Carrie, you can do? just tell everybody's enjoying this because they're all saying fun, great things in the comments. Carrie, what do you think about? I'll just take over. You yeah, know? go ahead. Yeah, just take over. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Carrie, what do you think about the email new laws uh, with all of that that's coming around where, you know, you have to disclose all of that in 2018 on the intention of your email? And <sighs> Yeah. Um, there's, <laughs> if you have any people who receive any of your messaging in the European Union, you need to be up on the law there. Um, it's really difficult. You need to be thinking about data and protecting consumer data in a much broader way than I think businesses previously have, like um, things that you wouldn't have considered proprietary, right? Like we're getting beyond credit card numbers, social security numbers. We're into just basic data about people that now you have to have made an effort to protect. And uh, I, I seriously doubt most businesses are, are ready for that. So it's the GDPR or something like that, right? Yeah, they should be looking yeah. into that like yeah. right now. And if they haven't already, if they haven't already, they should be. So that's definitely critically important. And then other things relating to email, there's there's a lot of people that are unhappy that now they have to do like a double opt in to get people on their email list. And I'm like, well, 
do you really want people who kind of weren't paying attention and accidentally opted into your emails anyway from a marketing standpoint? No, like that's not how you build relationships. So I think as as difficult as it can be complying with regulations, it's ultimately really good for your relationship with the, the audience you're trying to build anyway. So, I mean, it's worth the investment, in my opinion, to do that. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> I agree with you. I think it's awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, could you please, for the love of God, clients, stop buying email lists? It's, a, it's not a good idea. I know. Yeah. You meet somebody and they just like throw you on their email list. You're like, what? You're like, How I do you found even have your my business email card. I, I found your business card in this big pool. So <laughs> I thought I'd just opt you in. It's so the worst. Yeah, like, you don't do that at your event. You would never do that. Just collect business cards and like add people to your email list. There's a special place in hell for people oh. who do that. I promise you. The worst. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that is the next Instagram post. There's a special place. <laughs> <in place. laughs> That's the next Facebook group. <laughs> Somebody Facebook. tweet that out. Yeah. Ladies, we got to move on to our next group. I don't know why I cannot hear Carrie, but I can't wait to watch the playback because it looks like it was <laughs> Hilarious, as <laughs> always, because you have such a great personality, Carrie. <laughs> thank you. But thank you both so much for being on. I don't know why we're having some tech failures today, but hopefully yeah. uh, it'll clear itself out with the next group. Thank you both so much. You are so thank awesome. You. So we will see, see you around on the Twitters, as always. So next up, we're bringing some of our regulars. We got some amazing chat regulars we're bringing in, JMAD and Cheval. So... I'm going to send them up, beam them up into the broadcast, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to hear you guys. Hey, J-Matt. Hey, how's it going? Good. See, I can hear you. I can hear you just fine, too. Hey that was so odd. Carrie, of all people, that I couldn't hear. I mean, she is so, so great. And uh, while we're waiting for Cheval to pop in, why don't we start off you telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm a digital media specialist for a nonprofit in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I also run a networking group in Milwaukee for other professionals that want to talk about social media. So it's talking about social media, but in real life. So it's a lot of fun. We meet once a month uh, and we just continue to network and find the latest trends and what's going on. Awesome. How did you first hear about social ROI chat? Do you remember? Because you've been coming to it for a very long time. Yeah, I think I might have actually attended the first one. Uh, I think I saw it on your feed and I wanted to check it out. And it took me a little while to actually realize that it was in Australia. Like that's where home base is for Managed uh -huh. Twitter. Uh, so that was actually really cool to find out. I don't think I've ever attended a Twitter chat that was hosted from outside of the United States before. Right. Well, yeah, Manage Flitter is based in Australia. I'm in the States. And we mm -hmm. wanted to choose a time that worked for both the States and Australia uh, for as many you know places possible. But as you know, that doesn't always work. Although there are people that are up right. all hours, so you never know what you're going to get. Uh, but we've had such yeah. an amazing group of regulars that just come back week after week after week. And I'm just so honored that like you like the chat so much that you just keep coming back. Are there any guests or topics that come to mind that like really just stuck with you? Um, I can't say there was a certain topic or a certain guest that stands out. It's really each time it's the continued contributors that you see joining in each time uh, and familiar faces that you get to build a relationship over a, a couple of weeks at a time, a couple of months at a time that when you see them, you're excited to see them and welcome again and learn from them and they get to learn from you. Right. Absolutely. Um, and you go on other Twitter chats or yeah. I've seen you on some others. Um, so were you like already really well versed with Twitter chats before social ROI or was that still kind of new for you? Before social ROI, I had a chance to get really familiar with Twitter chats, but if it's been a year, it's, it's hard to believe it's already been a year or it has been a year. Um, it doesn't feel like it's been that long, oddly. Um, I would say I probably had a couple months of experience with Twitter chats before social ROI came on, uh, but I learned fast that it is one that is highly engaged and you get to learn a lot. So I've made it a point to schedule us into my regular weekly attendings if uh, I'm available. I, and I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you so much. It looks like yeah. Cheval made it in. Hey, Cheval. Hey, hey guys. How y'all doing? Good. Great. Good. So you're one of our regular 
Sparklers too, you've been coming to the chat for a very long time. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yes, um, well, I'm a founder and CEO of Valami LLC, which is a marketing agency that helps businesses, small and mid-sized businesses navigate social media to build our audience. And I'm, and I'm based here in Houston, like you, Madeline. And basically, I, found, I actually found out about uh, Social ROI last year, actually. Well, well, actually, seeing it seeing it constantly, and I decided to, like, you know, to participate, and it's really cool. And that's how I found out about Managed Flutter, which, I mean, the people there are really awesome. Yeah, great group of people there. Love working with them. Uh, in the course of the one year that we have been hosting Social ROI, have there been any guests that like really stood out to you or topics that really resonated with you that you can think of? Well, I, a couple of guests. I know one is one of my favorites is Jessica Jessica Phillips, which she is she's uh, basically like like the, like her uh, spirit, her her um, her her vital her uh, message of relationship marketing, which. It's really it's all about is like you know building trust with your audience over time and not just going straight for the sale. That's one of the things that that's that's one of the guests I really like. You know she's awesome, and of course Carrie Gogon is another one. She's she's really cool. I love I love uh, how she like bring she puts she like it helps you understand like the law behind you know copywriting and social like help you understand how to you know what. What you can use for your uh, broadcast or your Twitter chats or, you know, podcasts and, and what you can't use. And that's that's another one I really like. And I'm trying to think of one more. Oh, boy. Um, I'm trying, I, I really can't think of others, but those are the two. I can think of. Well, those were great. And like for me, it's like everybody. I love them all. I think I think yep. we, every guest we've had has been incredible. Um, GMAT, I just came up with a really cool question off the top okay. of my head that I just want to like ask somebody, and I think you'll be perfect for this. If Sounds somebody good. say to you, well, GMAT, what's the social ROI chat you keep, I keep seeing you on? Like, how would you, like, like an elevator pitch, maybe a one-liner, how would you describe that to somebody? It's, it's a community of experts around the world that get together and talk about marketing and getting a return on your investment. I love it. That is so good. Somebody should tweet that out because that was good. Perfect. Cheval, what, what's your thought on that? How would you describe Social ROI chat to someone? Uh, Social ROI is a great place to learn from uh, everyone who are really experts, you know, and to contribute, you know, and of course uh, interact with, with the guests as well who are there to provide value to, to, the, uh, to attendees. Yeah, very good. Guys, thank you both so much for coming on here and sharing your thoughts, and especially as, a, as regular participants who are there pretty much every week. Love getting your take on this. So thank you so much for celebrating our one-year anniversary with us. You guys rock. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks for having us, Madeline. Sure thing. I want to see if we can bring Kevin Garber in, uh, our CEO of Manage Flitter. Let me see if... Uh, because uh, we'd love to have him come chat with. Hey, Kevin. Hey, hey, Madeline. Can you I'm hear sorry, me? I'm okay? sorry, I didn't mean like put you on the spot. We had a few minutes <laughs> to spare. I wanted to see if we could have you come in and chat with us. That's okay. Am I coming through? Okay, I'm sitting in a car, um, sort of about seven k's from the Sydney CBD. I had a very early morning um, meeting that I had to go to. I thought it was safer just to stick in the car. Um, but I've been following and watching, and I think it's it's great to see the previous guests and it's also really great to see some of the regulars like Cheval and J-Matt uh, often we we get so used to seeing their Twitter handle and seeing their name that we actually don't um, see the people behind it so that's really great and um, it's really um, this initiative to have the anniversary chat was actually was your idea so thanks for thanks for putting forward that idea and thanks for organizing it it's it's really uh, nice to reflect back and and pull it all together and, and uh, review the year and I cannot hear you I am so sorry I'm gonna bring Zala in real quick to, there's something with every so often there's somebody in here and I can't hear Zala are you there? Yes. Hello, I'm hello. here, but I can't see you. Okay. I can't hear either one of you. Um, 
I'm just gonna let y'all run with go. it for a few minutes uh, before we get I'll our next guest. People can can hear me um, on uh, on the Facebook. Can can people on the Facebook live hear me? Don't know if uh, I, I think I'm I think, so sorry uh, I cannot I think hear I, you. They can hear me on the Facebook. Uh, Madeline, and you can't, so you're not obviously hearing me say that. I'll just pop it. Uh, Joe says um, we can hear you guys. So Madeline, I can hear you, um, and they can hear me. All right, I'm going to go and bring in our next group. I, I just wanted to bring you in for a moment, Kevin, since you weren't in at the beginning. And uh, we'll bring in our next round, and then I'll bring you back in for our final thoughts at the end. Thank you so much. I'm trying to do this with even with some technology fail. If I cannot hear you guys, um, just give me a sign language and let me know when you're done talking so I know. We're going to bring in, it's now time for Gina Schreck and Lucy Rindler Kaplan. Yay. Two fabulous ladies. Uh, Gina was our guest on the chat last week, and Lucy has been one of our regulars. Hello, ladies. Hi. Are you, are it's, been a short year. it's been a short year. <laughs> it has. Lucy, how are you? I'm good. How are you? This is so odd. It's like every other segment. I can't hear That's somebody. Weird. That is so odd. I've had I'm, that happen. I've had that happen before on Be Live. I have never had that happen on Be Live, and I've been That's using this glitchy. for so long. Yeah. Okay. So weird. It is weird. Yeah. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Gina, we just had you last week and you were amazing uh, talking about lead magnets. Really enjoyed that so much. And Lucy, you've been joining us as one of our regulars for quite some time. And we have a, a fun little thing going each week where uh, we have that tweet that goes out about like, hey, be sure to like share this with friends and let them know. And it always reminds me to like, if you if you haven't gotten there yet, it prompts me to like send you a quick tweet like, hey, Lucy, come join us. And it it works every it time. Works. It works all the time. I am the worst with time zones. I don't know why. And so I always feel like I'm missing the start of this chat. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, I don't mind telling you. It's, it well, works pretty good. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, Gina, um, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, I've, I've been kind of like you in, in business for myself for 23 years and um, own a digital marketing agency and we help companies connect to their world. And I think it's, you know, more and more, it's being more strategic, helping people be more strategic because social media, people just think throw a lot of stuff out and be out there a lot. And that's going to get magically, it's going to convert to business. And, you know, we try to help clients understand the strategy behind that. Cool. Yeah. And uh, Lucy, a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I, um, I also work for myself like you ladies do. I haven't been doing it quite as long. I left the brand side in 2013. Um, so I've been doing it for about five years on my own. I run RK Marketing and PR. So it's a full service. Uh, marketing and PR agency with a high focus on social, obviously. Um, and it's great. Like you said, you know, we, today I met with a couple of clients and we put together like their promotions for the year, um, both online and live. Um, and it's, it's great. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. And I absolutely love coming to this chat and learning from ladies like you who I totally look up to. Um, and learn so much from all the time. That's, That's what I love about social. We all learn so much from each other. Oh, and the more you're yeah. out there, the more people you connect with that are just brilliant. So true. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Um, Gina, you spoke about lead magnets, which I think is something that no one talks about much, right? Like, like who does that on Twitter chats? You know, just having a topic about something that's actually very important in our marketing. Uh, so I thought that was just so incredibly useful. I had so many people tell me how much they enjoyed it and got a lot out of it. Um, but looking into, you know, our new year, 2018, what would be your biggest piece of social media advice you, you are giving out to marketers for the new year? 
I think we need to pause and plan. I, I, I really think we need to identify, kind of like Rebecca had said, identify that one thing. But I look at it and say, who are you really trying to connect with? Because what I see a lot is we all connect with our friends and our peers, and we have this love fest on all our social channels, and we spend so much time on our social channels having this love fest, but no business is being conducted. So if we pause and plan, and so if you're trying to reach, I don't know, antique dealers, write content for antique dealers. And then look at your content universe. You know, your, I always look at this universe of content being our website is our core, and then we create these big pieces of content that are like the planets, and their blog posts, and videos, and white papers, and all of these big pieces of content should gravitationally pull people into want to work with us. And then social is the stars that shine on that on the planets. So if we plan that way, and, and we talked about that last week of reverse engineering, if you look at that and plan, how can my social uh, connect with the right people to pull them into my planets so they want to read my big pieces of content that then pull them in to want to work with me? And if we just put some sort of plan together, our social will be, well, it'll have a greater social ROI. <laughs> uh, hashtag social ROI. That's awesome. That whole thing was like one big tweetable. That was just so <laughs> awesome. I love it. Uh, Lucy, now you've been one of our regulars. You're always coming on there. Has there been some of uh, our past guests that have like really stood out or topics that really stood out to you? Um, yeah. So definitely the lead magnets. Um, that and the ones you do about blogging. Um, I it's feel great. like... The thing about that I love about this chat is that you do do topics that you don't normally see. You know, so many times, I don't know if there can be possibly another chat on personal branding. Um, but if you try to do things like you do, you go deeper and you learn more. Um, and so the lead magnet one I thought was great. And I feel like of many times this chat will then inspire me to go blog, which I absolutely love because anytime something can tell me like to about a topic, then it's perfect. And I can actually sit down and write it and not just think about it all the time. Yeah. Awesome. Now, if somebody said to you, Lucy, you're always tweeting the social ROI every week. What, what is that? How would you describe that this chat to someone? It's my school. It's my social school. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that it's where not only do I see a lot of my friends, that I don't normally find all together. Um, but it's also a great place for inspiration and key learnings. That's so great. Thank you. you Gosh, know, like, I, I want to nice jump in on that. Someone yesterday asked me why it's ineffective. He said, well, I wonder why it doesn't work to hire your own social media team within a larger company. He said, it seems like it always, they always get stuck. And I think this is a really interesting point. As an entrepreneur, we attend school as often as we can. I think sometimes when you're working within a company, you're so busy with everything else, you don't keep yourself in school to learn and stay on the cutting edge as much as some might be able to. Maybe they're not able to because of meetings and so forth, but I wonder if that comes into play, and I think that's really interesting. We choose to continue learning. That's yeah. so true. Yeah, I think Twitter chats are a great place for learning, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And and Lucy, you're, I always see you popping up on chats. Have you been using Twitter chats for a long time? Is this something that you've gone to for learning or has this been more new for you in the past year? No, no. I I think it was, um, what is it? Uh, Community Manager Appreciation Day was like the first time I got it like initiated into chats. Um, and it had to have been like, it had to have been years now. Um and I started like almost immediately, like people were saying things and I was furiously like writing questions after anybody answered something. And the fact that like immediately I could get an answer and people were there to teach me more and to, you know, take me under their wing and be like, here, like come to this chat now. Um, and for a while, you know, I think it happens to a lot of us, like then that's all I was doing, you know, then for a while, like all I was doing was chats like 24 seven. Um, 
turned, <coughs> you know, into like the the newness kind of wore off, and I got to see like, okay, here are the chats that really have value for me. Here's where I'm going to keep learning things or see friends that now I have. Um, so I don't take part nearly in very many anymore. Um, but when I do, like, I, I really get the value out of them. Yeah. Great. That is so wonderful. I appreciate you being one of our regulars. Thank you so much for being here. And Gina, you as well. Love getting these insights. So thank you for celebrating our one year anniversary with us today. Happy Always birthday. Fun. Thank you guys so much. We've got another group of people I'm bringing over to you. Uh, I've got I and Nicholas. Uh, let me add them into our conversation here. These are regulars on our Twitter chat each week and also part of our greeter team. They help me uh, as volunteers help greet people as they come in each week. Hello, I. Hello, Nicholas. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Great. Great. Good to see you. I, you got a haircut. You look great. Thank you. If you're still <laughs> watching, I'm remembering now. I'm, I'm it's sinking in. So complimenting so everybody. <laughs> hey, Nicholas, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, no, I cannot hear him. Oh. I don't know why I'm having these technical issues. So I, I'm a, I will throw out the questions and then I, you'll have to kind of roll with it since I cannot hear him. And I don't know why. It seems like every other time I cannot hear somebody. Okay. Yeah, I can hear him. I don't know why. I could hear him clearly. It's yeah. Just strange tech. I thought it was my AirPods and it's not. Um, okay. It's just, you know how it is with how tech will sometimes get all weird and uh, the unexplained. Um, anyway. You guys have been regulars for quite some time. Let's first start off just real quick, a little bit about you guys. I will start with you. Just tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yes. Hi, everyone. And I'm sorry, I just joined. And uh, my name is I. I'm a communication professor. I teach public relations, communication, and the social media courses at my school in New Jersey. I'm also an independent consultant. I help people to learn, to understand how to incorporate social media platforms into their classes as teaching tools. Awesome, thank you. I and Nicholas, a little bit about yourself. Hey everyone, I'm a digital strategist and I help small businesses take on giants. And digital <laughs> marketing and social media are one of the greatest tools to go and get that accomplished. And it came from my sales background. And I found that you could move from like that sales mode to relationship management. And that's why I love these Twitter chats and social media, because I get to meet all of you guys. And thank you so much for all your interactions. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for the hand signal. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't hear what you said. Okay. <laughs> So um, you both have been coming on the chat since the beginning. I will start with you. How did you first hear about social ROI and what drew you into it? Because I am a super fan of an amazing social media influencer called Madeline Sklar. So oh, I saw... <laughs> As long as this is serious, as long as I saw you tweeted that you are starting a social ROI chat, I was like, I need to be there. So I think I joined social ROI since day one. That's really how this got started for me. And I loved every single chat. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that very much. And Nicholas, what about you? And and I want you to just let me know when he's finished talking. <laughs> we'll have to play like musical host here. <laughs> I believe I started right up from day one, too, and it was from Twitter Smarter. There's all these links between all the different chats, and uh, I really have to thank Madeline for inviting me because I saw that she had posted it, and I've learned a ton, so thank you. Awesome. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so going back in the past year of this chat, have there been any hosts that like really stood out to you the most? Or have there been a few that like, well, I will start with you. Have there been some that like just really are like, wow, they were amazing. Like I know they all were amazing. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm not going to pick one or two because I love them all. <laughs> and since I'm the host, I kind of have to say that. Um, but I, who, who are some that really stood out to you? 
Yeah, this is ah,、uh, this is such a hard question. This is such a quite hard question because I really love all of them, and、um, I sometimes I got confused between the two chats, ROI and Twitter Smarter. Is Craig? Ah,、uh, I forgot his last name. The one who created the image is he part of Twitter、Craig、Smarter、Carpenter? or yeah,、okay. or ROI or social ROI or Twitter Smarter? Because I really loved him because not only and、uh, she made the image for me during the chat. I I think that left a, a strong impression on me how much he really cared about community and the cherish relationship building. I really appreciate that and also. He really taught me to approach image in a new way. Cause before I only used image to grab people's attention, but now I use image to start conversations, to build communities, and、uh, to tell my stories. And、uh, I, I really, I have to really thank him for that. And now for my Facebook show, I create different images, and uh, and uh, I, I really worked really well. Yeah, I think that's one of my favorite. Yeah. Okay, and and Nicholas, who has really stood out to you? As I said, this is a really hard question to answer because there's, I have to compliment you, Madeline, because everybody you've brought in has brought one different thing that really makes you think, and that's what I think the beauty of these chats are. Yeah, there's the relationship, and yeah, there's the community, but they really make you think and question what you're doing.、Um, Even like Rebecca's opener today, Rebecca has been one of my favorites because she cuts through the crap quite, quite frankly, and makes you really think about, you know, what what you're actually doing and what works. So thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that.、Um, now, if Somebody said to you, "We'll start with you." I. Somebody says, "I. What is this Twitter chat you're always on? This social ROI. How would you describe that to somebody?" And、uh, I want to say that first, I'm an advocate of lifelong learner. You know, I. I think. Regardless, of whatever you do, teaching social media, which is changing all the time, or even other subjects, I think our society is going through some rapid、uh, changes and disruptions. I think everyone needs to engage in lifelong learning and be a lifelong student. Even though I'm an educator, I had this so-called terminal degree. I believe I'm only at the beginning of my lifelong learn learning journey. So to me, Twitter social ROI is. Like Lucy mentioned, it's a school. It's a place where I engage in lifelong learning. I make friends and learn from each other, and continue to engage in lifelong learning. Well said. I agree. I mean, I'm a lifelong learner. I even though I teach social media, I teach business marketing, digital marketing for 22 years now.、Um, I never say I'm the guru. I know it all. Even though people. Tell me that I do not believe them for one minute because I am always on a mission to learn. I listen to so many podcasts and audio books every single day. I read books, as you know. I you're in my little book club. I started with the new Tim Ferriss book, which is phenomenal. If anybody's thinking about getting、Absolutely. it, highly recommend.、Um, I think lifelong learning is the, definitely the key, and I think Twitter chats, if done right, is such a great way to continuously learn. And I think. That uh, um, Lucy really did say it right when she says it is school. What what a well said thing there.、Uh, what about you, Nicholas? How what, how would you describe the social ROI chat to someone who's like, dude, what is this? What what's this chat you're on every week? Hi, I'm not sharing my answers with you anymore because you stole mine. But you know, I'll, I'll think of my own now.、Uh, quite simply, it.、Uh, Social ROI challenges what you think of social, and really makes you question what you're doing. And the ROI, don't be fooled. It's not just money. It's how you're investing your time to accomplish some type of goal, whether it's you know to go and expand your reach, to go and build your community, to go and share your blog, like whatever your main goal is. It's really helping you focus on getting the results you want and targeting the audience that you need to talk to. Awesome! Thank you so much. 
I really appreciate you both coming on and sharing some insights as chat regulars. I think this is just so wonderful. You both have been very inspiring to me the way you come on week after week and are there for people and love to be part of the conversation. You both share so much each week. So I really appreciate that. Thank you both so very much and for being here for our special one year anniversary, which is very exciting. So thank you both so very much. So um, to close out the hour, I want to bring Kevin back on. Uh, Kevin Garber, CEO of Managed Flitter, and hopefully I'm going to hear him this time. So let's oh. see if this will work. Hello, Kevin. Am I, am I patched in? Can you hear me this time around? I still cannot hear you. I cannot believe I cannot hear you. All right. I'm going to bring, hold on, I'm going to bring Joe up. I'm going to let Joe kind of moderate because I hate that I cannot hear this. Hello, Joe. Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> I can hear you. All right. I would love for Kevin to share final thoughts. Uh, Kevin is the one behind the, this entire chat, and I'm very honored he brought me along to come help build this uh, with Joe, with Kate. Um, I think we do amazing things each week, but I want Kevin to close out this hour by sharing, you know, I, I was not unfortunately able to hear what he said earlier, but I just wanted him to close this out because he is the man responsible for this chat. So Kevin, the floor is yours. Thanks, Madeline. I can hear you perfectly. You can't hear me. I think I can hear Joe as well, but just a couple of things um, to say. Joe, can you hear me okay? Yes, all good. Great, okay, so it means I'm coming through there. Uh, uh, firstly, just a, a, a thanks to the team. Um, Kate and Joe and Madeline. Kate does a fantastic job of the questions. Madeline finds fantastic guests, and I'm sure everyone would agree that the guests have been so fantastic. Um, I keep an eye on the chats while I'm at work, and every time I'm like just learning along the way from everyone's tweets. And that was the inspiration for the social ROI book. So we've actually compiled a fantastic, beautifully designed book, which Kate has led that project. And that's going to be available um, very, very soon in ebook and maybe even hard copy format that you'll be able to leave around the office or give to your clients because there's just so much high signal information in that book. So a, th a huge thank you to, to Kate and Joe, which are both very humble people and um, their capability and achievements and contribution to the company is far exceeds far much more than than what they lead on and um, to Madeline as well um, you've you've shown such initiative in in the live chats and the today was your idea and the original reason to get involved in the social ROI chat or to or to do it was I'm a big believer in having dialogue with your customers. You know, we only exist because of our paid customers. Um, we only exist because people in the industry use our product and love our product. Um, so um, social ROI just ticks off a few things. Is One is it helps create dialogue with our customers. And it also helps giving back to the industry, which even though is part altruism, um, the healthier and more um, sort of educated industry is it actually feeds back to us as well. And it's also a whole lot of fun. We're sitting in a small office in Sydney, Australia, some of our team members um, around the world, um, Kate in Canada. We've also got some of the dev team in Eastern Europe and Brazil. And it's also nice to put a bit of words and a bit of personality into into what's um, going on as well. So um, now ROI going and, and a huge thanks to all the regular, like some of you have become my friends. And if you ever in Sydney, drop me a line. Um, I am quite busy as we all are, but um, maybe one day we can have a little bit of a meetup. And funnily enough, when you're asking everyone else, um, what their favorite chat was. I mean, so many smart people, like it just, um, you know, but for me, one of the fun ones was having chocolate Johnny in the office in Sydney, Australia, uh, because having this, this high energy chap, just throwing chocolate around in the office and just, you know, talking about being chocolate Johnny was, was a little bit of fun. So, um, Thank you, everyone. You can follow me on Twitter, K E underscore G A. And by the way, I also believe that Twitter is is about to have a renaissance. It went through a bit of a flat phase there. They still pumped about the product. We still pumped about the product. People are still using it more than ever. Um, so definitely Twitter, as well as all some of the other social platforms. And um, 
Thanks, thanks, uh, Madeline, Joe, Kate, all the regulars, all the guests. Um, Evan, who I think was one of the first ones, a huge, um, a long time support of Manage Flitter. Um, so uh, may everyone have a wonderful and healthy and happy 2018. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, and I'd just like to add um, another special thank you, Madeline. Thank you so much for hosting the chat. It's really been wonderful to have you on. It's been my pleasure. I really enjoy working with all of you each week. I think we have an amazing community that comes back week after week. So it has definitely been my pleasure and my honor. So thank you, everybody, for being here with us and helping us celebrate our first year. Hopefully there'll be a lot more ahead. And we do have great guests coming up in the following week. So we hope to see you back with us next week on the Social ROI Chat. So bye for now. Bye.